Welcome to the Wednesday Night Ghost Stories with Amanda Harvey from Deep Woods Paranormal. These stories that I'm going to share with you are based on true stories, stories that have happened to us, to Matt and I, or to clients over the last 20 years. I've changed the names and some addi additional details have been added, but the core of the stories are true. All the stories have been written and narrated by me. If you like to share a ghost story and allow me to rewrite it, please click the link below or write us via our email at deepwoodspara at gmail.com. Your support is important to us, so please follow us on TikTok and YouTube. You can see videos where we investigate paranormal activity and if you like this podcast, do not forget to share it with your friends. Let us begin. This is a story that was based in 2010. Jason sat on his bed thinking about Sarah. He currently lived with his friend, friends Jim and David in a three-bedroom apartment located in Newport Beach, one mile from downtown Corona Del Mar. When he started going to UCI three years ago, they found this killer ocean view apartment and had been and have been living here ever since. Jason was the first of his friends to have a steady girlfriend, and he was thinking it was about time that he found his own place with his girl. He loved her, and he was ready for it to be just the two of them. So Jason went to the leasing office to speak to Anna, the manager of the apartment homes. At one time, she was his leasing consultant and had leased to him and his friends three years ago. He knew that she was going to be able to help him find a place for him and Sarah. He had already spoken to Sarah, and she, she too was ready for the next big step in their relationship, and they both decided they wanted to stay in that apartment complex because it was such a great location. Anna had worked in Newport Beach for over three years now and had worked her way, way up from the leasing consultant to the manager, and she knew all the tenants and all the great gossip uh, that was to be had. Jason came in to see her on Friday asking about a one-bedroom apartment location. He was going to leave his friends with their permission and move in with Sarah, and he seemed really happy about it. He had stated they were going to get a dog, and he really looked forward to having his own place. Anna hesitated letting Jason, to, letting Jason know about the only one-bedroom available in the pet location. Legally, she didn't have an obligation to tell Jason about what happened there, but she did know him for a very long time. Did she want to tell him what really happened? Anna knew that something may happen, but maybe nothing would happen. She didn't want to burst Jason's happy bubble in any way, so she decided against telling him. Jason was very happy that Anna was able to find a one bedroom that just came out of remodel and Sarah was just excited. Anna scheduled their move in for two weeks out. Jason and Sarah helped each other pack up their individual apartments and his friends threw them a huge celebration barbecue at the apartment complex pool. They were set to move in two days from now. They had already gone to the shelter and found the perfect dog a Labradoodle mix that Sarah fell in love with right away. They named him Jake. Two days later, Jason and Sarah arrived at the leasing office to pick up their keys to their new home. Um, because, the because Jason was coordinating the move of their apartment and all their friends and families, Sarah went to the apartment on her own. Anna told Sarah, I did a final walkthrough and everything looks great. Everything is new, and if anything doesn't work, please let me know. Everything is under warranty, so you should be good to go. Sarah thanked her and left to see the apartment for herself. She had not seen it yet because it was busy being made ready. Sarah noticed right away when she walked in, I mean, when she walked to the apartment, that it was next to the parking space. The laundry room was right next to it. It was located on the second floor. It's a corner apartment with vaulted ceilings, white cabinets in the kitchen, granite countertops, gas cooking, wood fireplace, new beige carpet. Man, it was a lot more than she expected, and this was great. Sarah turned down the AC because it was 90 degrees out, and the apartment was warm. 
She noticed all the cabinet doors were open in the kitchen, so she went about shutting all the doors before she left to get Jason and the crew. Jason happened to be right behind Sarah with all his friends in the U-Haul that contained all of Sarah's stuff. They would move his stuff later as he just needed to walk it over. Sarah was in the bedroom when he walked in with some boxes and called out to her, Babe, I'm here. Sarah was planning on where she was going to put everything. She walked out to meet Jason. The living room and the dining room was an open space and you could see the kitchen. As Sarah was talking to Jason, she noticed the kitchen cabinet doors were open. Didn't she just close them? Maybe Jason opened them, checking them out. She dismissed it as more friends started coming in with boxes. Jason and Sarah had lived in the apartment for a week and they had made the transition from two apartments to one quite easily and only had some disagreements on furniture placements, but it was still early. Jason had got home and he was outside the apartment and he heard Jake, their dog, barking ferociously in the apartment. And he picked up the pace because he didn't want his neighbors to be mad about the barking dog. He opened the apartment door calling for Jake, but he couldn't see him. He was only in one better apartment. Where was the dog? Jason found Jake stuck in the bathroom. Somehow Jake closed himself in the bathroom. What the heck? Jake ran out of the bathroom, barking, running into each room like he was looking for someone. Jason was uneasy as he followed Jake. Had someone come into his home? After a thorough search, nothing was missing. He started to make dinner for Sarah. Jason told Sarah about Jake being locked in the bathroom over dinner, and he, he wanted to make sure that he was, she was careful when she left for work the next day and closed the bathroom door. It was Sarah's job to come home at lunchtime to walk Jake. She keeps, he keeps leaving the kitchen cabinet doors open. Every day she comes home from lunch to walk, walk Jake and she has to close all the damn doors. Today she wasn't paying any attention and she banged her knee hard on the cabinet door underneath the sink. On top of that, Jake was locked in the bathroom again. She knew she closed the door when she left this morning. He must think it's funny or something. Well, no more silently just taking it. She's going to hash this out. Sarah was so mad. She decided to get off work early and waited for Jason to come home. Jason had a very long day. He had classes early this morning and then he had to work afterwards and he was tired as he opened the door. Sarah was there waiting for him and she looked pissed. Uh-oh, what happened? Jason, what the hell? I'm tired of coming home at lunch and closing all the cabinet doors. You have to start closing them when you're done. I hurt my knee and I'm all over it. Plus, Jake was locked in the bathroom again. Babe, what are you talking about? I didn't even go into the kitchen this morning. I was running late for class and I just ran out the door with no coffee or breakfast. I've not been leaving the kitchen doors open. Why would I do that? Sarah looked at Jason's face and knew he was telling the truth. But who was opening the cabinet doors? And how is Jake getting locked in the bathroom? She, had, she said to Jason, could it be the dog? He can't reach the, the upper cabinets, can he? This is so weird. What's happening? I don't know, babe. This is so strange. I'm sorry for losing it, but the doors are always open when I get home. Jason, let's set up a video camera to see if, if it's the dog that's causing all this doors to be opened. The next morning, Jason set up the video camera facing the kitchen cabinets. He spoke to Jake, dude, you have to stop opening the cabinets. It's making mama insane. Later that day, Sarah came home for lunch to find the camera had not been knocked over and all the cabinets were open again. She rewound the tape to see that the dog was barking at something, but she couldn't see anything on the camera and it fell over. Did the dog do that? This went on for days. The same thing, the camera being knocked over and the cabinet doors were open, but it was never caught on the video. The dog was always barking off the camera at something no one could see. They decided that they need to leave Jake at Sarah's mom's house to see 
if what would happen without the dog in the apartment. At the end of the next day, they were excited to see if they caught anything on tape. They were beginning to su suspect that it might be something other than the dog, like one of their friends that had the emergency key to the apartment playing a prank on them. Sarah met Jason at the door that night and they looked at each other. Finally, they would find out what was happening. They walked into the house and all the kitchen cabinet doors were closed. They shrugged. Jason went to check the tape and Sarah went into the bedroom to change out of her dress clothes. Jason, Jason, come quick. Sarah was frantic and Jason came running. The dresser drawers in their room were all open. The closet door was open and the bathroom cabinets were all open. Jason, Sarah sobbed. What's happening? Jason searched everything, and again, nothing was missing from the apartment. He calmed Sarah down, he, and he took her out to dinner. They needed to get out of that apartment to discuss this. He was no stranger to ghost stories. Didn't everyone have one? Perhaps that is what's happening. Jason brought this up to Sarah, and she was thinking the same thing. The apartment was old, besides being remodeled. Maybe Anna would know something about the history of, of the apartment. Jason, can you go talk to her? I don't want to sound crazy, said Sarah. Sure, I will talk to her tomorrow. Anna was at her desk in the office when Jason walked in. Hi, Jason, how's it going? Is everything all right? I've not seen you in six or seven months since you and Sarah moved in to the new place. Jason sat down at Anna's desk. I have something to ask you, and it might sound crazy, but I need to know. Go ahead, ask me. You'll be surprised. I do not think most things are crazy. Sarah and I have been having some strange things happening in the apartment. Cabinet doors opening, the dog getting shut in the bathroom, dresser drawers being open, the dog barking at nothing that we can see. At first, we thought it was the dog, and then maybe some of our friends were trying to prank us. But now we're thinking we may have a ghost in our apartment. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> Actually, no, it doesn't. I was afraid something like this might, might happen. To be honest with you, I, I was going to tell you, but legally I couldn't. But I've known for you for years, and I'll trust that you will. this information will not leave this room. I apologize to you and Sarah, but I really should not be telling you this. Six months before you came in, we were helping this lovely namey, lady named Faith look for an apartment. She had lived in the Letter Streets for years in a small bungalow owned by an older lady. Recently, the old woman passed away and her son decided to sell the property. You know that land is worth millions of dollars. Well, Faith was paying $1,600 for a two-bedroom bungalow. You know, that one bedroom you rented is 1900 so she was having a huge sticker shock. She was having a huge sticker shock. And plus, she had raised her daughter in that bungalow and had lived there for over 20 years. Faith was devastated, and she had a really hard time with her move. She actually visited us probably 20 times before Francesca, the leasing consultant, talked her into that remodeled unit that you and Sarah moved into. It was a struggle for Faith and Francesca because she would call her constantly and Faith would, I mean, Francesca would have to reassure her and let her know that she was going to love it here and everything was going to be all right. We happened to be the closest apartment to her bungalow and she lived there for so many years. So it was, it was meant to be, I thought. Anyways, Francesca and I talked about it. And it was just so sad because Faith cried every time she visited. She was in her 50s, so it was hard to see someone your mother's age cry like that, if you know what I mean. Finally, it was after months and months and months, it was her moving day. And she came in with her friends that, helped, that was going to help her move. And she was happy and smiling and excited. I was happy for her and glad that she, was, she would be here because... You know, we have the coffee maker and she could visit us every day if she was lonely. Uh, and she wouldn't, you know, she would have someone to talk to. 
Anyways, I helped her finish the paperwork and gave her the keys to the apartment. Usually I would go with her, but she wanted to walk in by herself and have a moment. So she took the keys and she left. I remember it was Friday and I had the weekend off. And so when I came into work on Monday, I thought of her. and I wanted to check on her to see how she was. So I left her a message on her cell phone. Several days went by and there was no one home. I mean, Frances and still no, and still <laughs> Francesca and I did not hear from her. And so we began to worry about Faith. So I went to her apartment, just see if I can talk to her, knocked on the door and, and no one was home and it just felt empty, you know? I just had a feeling. So I called her emergency contact. And the emergency contact was just a friend and it wasn't her daughter. So excuse me, I reached her friend named Charles, and what he told me was horribly tragic. That Friday night, as Faith was moving in, she suffered a fatal heart attack on the stairs leading into the apartment. She didn't die in the apartment, so I wasn't an obligated to tell anyone. However, however, I thought twice about it because I felt like she was still there when I walked the apartment. It took so long for you to get in the apartment because the family still had to come and empty it out. I didn't want to sound crazy to you, so I didn't tell you. Faith was not a mean person. She was just lost. I'm sure she was just trying to get your attention. If I may make a suggestion, maybe you should talk to her and let her know that you live there now and you're sorry what happened to her. If you want to transfer apartments, I'll waive the transfer fee. I'm so sorry she is making a mess out of your and, you and Sarah's apartment. I guess I should have told you. Jason was stunned. What a sad tale, but he was open-minded. Anna, you, you were right. I would have not told me either, but thanks for sharing this. I'm going to talk to Sarah to see what she wants to do and get back to you. Anna didn't know what Jason thought of her but she felt better of having told him the truth. Jason made dinner that night as, she, as he was waiting for Sarah, and all the while he talked to Faith. Faith, I am sorry that you lost your home and your life so suddenly, but you are welcome to stay with us if you stop opening the cabinets and scaring the dog. I don't know if you're here, but I wanted to put that out there and let you know that we can live together. Sarah came home from work, and Jason told her about Faith and let her know what Anna had told him. She, she let him, Anna had told him, and let, and, and that they could transfer to another location or stay and live with the ghost, Faith. Sarah was freaked out at first, but then she started thinking about Faith and what happened to her, and she decided to talk to her as well. She let Faith know that she could stay as long as she stopped scaring her. Sarah went to visit Anna and let her know that she's been, she had been talking to Faith and they were just going to live with her because she didn't feel threatened and the apartment felt at peace now. Jason and Sarah lived in that apartment for another year with Faith. Every once in a while, Faith would open the cabinet doors to remind them that she was still there. <laughs>